It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Now, there's probably a title for this video, but shooting it right now, I actually don't know what it's going to be called. And the reason is, I'm having a look at a package today that was sent to me courtesy of Idyllic Acrylic Peripherals. I always get that wrong because for the longest time, I only knew them as Idyllic. So, Idyllic is part of the Keyboard Treehouse uh, group, the vendors that use the Keyboard Treehouse to produce and sell Australian made mechanical keyboard stuff. And, and it's a really great uh, sort of group that's come together to essentially promote and sell and design and create keyboard things in one location. Uh, it helps reduce you know, their overheads and stuff like that and it just makes life a lot easier to run it through one site than everyone having their own little shops if they're not a massive vendor. So uh, Idyllic reached out to me and they were like, I've got something that I'm playing with that I'm prototyping. Can I send something for feedback? And I was like, sure, of course, I'd love to. They didn't ask for me to shoot a video, but I told them that I was probably going to shoot a video and they said that was fine. So if you do see the fact that it says a paid promotion, I'm only ticking that because YouTube says if you get stuff and it can be a form of items as payment, then that's why I'm doing it rather than the fact that they actually wanted this to be a review and spot. So that's really the movement and direction that I'm going with a lot of the videos if people send me stuff to review, if they do have a business or something like that. Just for safety purposes, I'm just going to mark it as paid promotion, even if it probably isn't. Now, right now, the Keyboard Treehouse website is actually undergoing maintenance. So it's actually down, which is why I've used the cache. But that's the Keyboard Treehouse as far as their website goes. Uh, and you can go to the makers section and you'll see you know, the various makers that actually currently utilize the treehouse and the fact that they've got a whole bunch of different stuff and you can just check it out at, as you can see down below, keyboardtreehouse.com. Uh, so thank you very much for that. What I have in front of me here is this package. Now, I did send it to me with Express Post and Australia Post absolutely destroyed the outer packaging. I'm not going to show the other side because, you know, that's my address and things like that. But I do want to mention, Idyllic, you spelt my surname wrong. Uh, <laughs> which is amazing that you can do that considering how long we've been working on things together. Doesn't matter. I just thought it was really funny. They shoved this into my mailbox super hard when it was obvious that it wasn't going to fit in my mailbox. So I can see through the gaps that there are boxes in there and I hope that it's not damaged, but I, it doesn't look like it's damaged, but there was a likelihood that it could have been. Now, I got a statement from Idyllic, which I'm just going to read out to you. And my guess from it is going to come afterwards, right? So Idyllic says, this item is designed to be purposely excessive. They didn't like how simple and lazy some current designs of products are and they wanted the opposite so they wanted something that was really complex but at the same time sensible. They wanted it to be purposely complex as a three-part support system rather than just one to help it make it look complete and solid but not feeble. And they were going for the aesthetic route rather than fulfill a certain purpose of utility. Now this item is targeted towards enthusiasts who can appreciate the effort that's been put into designing it rather than the basic consumer who is just after utility and paying a minimum. And they actually bought out a large uh, minimum amount quantity and paid upfront for the 15 centimeter piece used in this design. Wow, okay. It was custom request made to order and they had to go out of their way to get the service and source the part because nothing existed that they could find that didn't look anemic. So they're really proud of it because it's something different and it's something they've been working on for months and they're really relieved that it's like almost there, which is what this is about, which is to get that feedback and that test type of thing. 
What I've been told is it requires uh, metric M3, M4, M5 tools because that's what the screws have. So what I've got here is um, a set of Gorilla Grips that uh, I've had for a very long time. That's metric, so it does have the 345 sizing in it. So it might be a little bit cumbersome to use because you know these things aren't fantastic compared to dedicated keys, but we'll have a crack. And uh, they've actually, Idyllic has provided me an imager album if I get stuck. So the whole point here is, can I put it together? Can I figure it out without having to refer to instructions? So it's kind of perhaps a little bit puzzling, maybe not. And supposedly it should take about anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to assemble this. So, what I'm going to do is, we're going to open it up, we'll take out the pieces, and then I might do it as a time lapse, so you don't have to sit through me fumbling about it, uh, and then we can talk about it at the end. So, let's just uh, go through the way that Australia Post seemed to tell me that they wanted to go through it. So, wow, so it's three packages there. Ah, so you can see they did actually end up with a little bit of damage there, but otherwise not too bad, pretty neat. The rubber band certainly helped keep it together. So that'll go into the recycling bin later. Camera focus is not liking it very much because it's white boxes with no hard focal point. Okay, now my guess after reading all of that description is it's going to be a keyboard stand. So we got some black acrylic, a very familiar mountain looking profile which says keyboard stand and there is a lot of holes <laughs> in this. Okay, so we've got what looks like uh, two sets, so I suspect that it's for either two ends or it's got four pieces holding that together. So we'll put that there. One packet's probably going to contain the screws and bolts. Oh, it's got pre-screwed parts in it. Wow. Okay. So, Idyllic has been really kind to custom lays our logo on that. That's really nice. That etching, you can feel that texture. That's really, really nice. And I... Okay, so it's two pieces here that have already been pre bolted together, pre-screwed together. So there is some screws in there. Well, maybe maybe it needs to come apart. We don't know. We'll, we'll continue to have a look. So that's box two of three. And there, <laughs> there's a lot of screws. <laughs> there's a lot of bolts in here. <laughs> and... Aha! Okay, so, wow. That is... I think this is the custom part that they're talking about. So we've got a, uh, a gold rod and we've got a black, well, that's really more a bronzy copper color, but it's a nice color. I'm just going to put that there so it's not going to go rolling around. And then, what's this? So it's in paper, which I guess is uh, to help protect it from scratching and scuffing against the other components. Let's uh, be delicate because I don't want to break it or snap it if it is going to be potentially delicate. Is it a PCB type of material? Is it just really thin acrylic? It's very mysterious that it's actually uh, wrapped and bundled like this. It's got tissue paper around it, so obviously something... Uh, well, not tissue, but paper towel around it. Wow, okay, that's a, uh, that's a shiny. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is clear acrylic that's actually got a metallic film on the back that's been lased, it's been etched off from the laser, I believe, to give you that appearance. I can see why it was wrapped. Um, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty funky. Okay, so let's just put that aside there. Uh, let's move those out of the way. So, 
what we're going to do now is we're just going to cut away and go to a time lapse of me putting this together without trying the guide to see if I can get it to figure out. And then we'll come back and see what this looks like and uh, we'll prop up a board and, and check it out. We'll be back very soon. Okay, so we are back. Uh, hopefully you would have just seen the time lapse of me putting this keyboard stand together. Uh, it took me 26 minutes, 26 and a half minutes to put it together. So the estimate of about 15 to 30 minutes was pretty good. I did not have to go and look at the uh, instructions. There were, f it was fairly, self-evident once I got to a certain point of understanding how the pieces fit together. One of the things that threw me off uh, in putting this together was just it had these cutouts and I wasn't sure on what the correct orientation was but when I realized that they were mirrored I decided to go with the matte black external whereas you have the option of flipping it around and having gloss on the outside if you prefer. Now that's a personal preference. I like to have the matte black so it's not a fingerprint magnet personally. Now the thing that makes it really interesting is that it's got these rubber uh, bump on, well rubber pads sections that are cut out of it. It's, it's actually like cut slightly into it. You can see the color texture difference here. That gloss and then that matte section. That strip is where I've stuck on the rubber feet that was on this strip. But what makes it really interesting is that there's all these bolts, all these screws that go through and there's no nuts holding them on. And what Idyllic has done, and I deliberately left one open, is the hole size for that layer is actually smaller. So what's happening when you put your bolt into that hole is that you're actually threading it and cutting the thread into the acrylic as you turn it. It's really clever because it reduces the amount of hardware that you require. However, there is a risk that you will strip the acrylic if you over tighten it. And I guess that's also the reason why you'll see that these are actually longer than the thickness of the acrylic. So you can see that the bolts protrude past that if the camera will ever focus correctly, but the bolts actually do protrude past. So if you do strip it, you can just get the right size nut and put it on and the assembly will work. Now whether in production they will come with optional nuts or not, I don't know. I can't really speak for that, but that's really clever. So, you know, this last little one um, that I'm going to put in will complete that and essentially you can just screw them straight in. Now, I'm just going back and having a look at the comment that was given to me about the size and they said you need M3, M4, M5. No, you don't need M3, M4, M5. You need M2, 2.5 and... Um, or is it these? These are, yeah, so the little ones are twos, the medium ones are two fives, and then the big one is the four, is the four. So just slightly off on the actual size requirements, but that's okay. It's, it's forgivable. It's forgivable. So I need to go down to the two to do this small one. So I'm just going to finish that off. Now, fairly straightforward. It's just a lot of screws that you have to deal with. And you can see how many screws are actually here. So the bottom is actually secured by four there, 
four there and then two at that back plane. A little bit excessive, possibly. I don't know why it needed the three in the middle here. You know, I can understand one at each of the apexes. Makes perfect sense. Uh, a couple there, maybe spread out could have worked just as well. Maybe spread out rather than them being together. But look, functionally, engineering-wise, design-wise, there's no issue with where they're placed. It's just potentially excessive because for symmetry, I would have expected then, if you've got that pattern going, another three at the back would have worked just to give that, you know, really rugged look. Um, another bit of feedback on that is these are plastic nylon nuts, and I think I've actually stripped one of them. That's the problem because you're working with nylon nuts. If they were metal nuts, then you're much less likely to. I wasn't sure that that gap that you can see at the bottom here from that bottom plate is meant to be there or not. And that's where I think I stripped that particular uh, nut because I thought that the gap space when you tightened it down would have actually popped it in and closed it up. But it does not seem to be the case. So that's just a bit of food for thought on that. This front bar, this front piece with the, the nameplate on it is really nice, but the fitment of the the nut there, you can see it sort of sits out a little bit there. That was a little bit challenging to just sort of get in and, and I decided to just leave them on and then sort of slot in and then tighten it in around it rather than dropping it in and then putting the screw in like I had done with the back piece here. Now, of course, with these rods, you have a choice of putting them wherever it is that you like to have your color. Uh, I just chose to leave it there, as it were. Now, I think I got it right by having the rubber bits on the inside, then on the outside, because if I had put them on the outside, I don't think the slots would have worked for the position of this nameplate. Okay. Everything else... Um, oh, and also because that particular plate has to be on the inside because there's these tabs that the bottom plate goes into. So that, that makes perfect sense. It's very rugged. It's very, very rugged. So I can see what they mean, what Idyllic meant by the fact that, you know, it has an aesthetic to about it, and it's definitely not for beginners who just want something cheap because there's obviously a lot of cuts and there's a lot of hardware involved in this. I think if you're going to have colored uh, hardware at the front, it would be nicer if these two black screws were matching to whatever the nameplate is, depending on if that's an option or a bling kind of accessory to that, like that brass rod to match. Now, you'll notice I have a lot of excess screws, and I suspect it's because it's meant to be the screws for this back piece, because there's eight here, two, four, six, eight, so there's ten spare, and there's eight in this back rod, but there's no other holes. So I don't know if it's just that somehow, you know, I got the extra screws, or where are they meant to go? But as far as prototypes go, I think it sits quite nicely, it's quite firm, and it doesn't really slide around once you put the feet on it. And as far as width goes, so here's an Ampro 2, uh, and we can stick that on, and voila. Now, of course, that's not going to really give you a good idea of what it looks like, so we're just going to uh, tilt that up precariously, and it will kind of look like that, front on, and I guess uh, kind of like that side on. The depth of the rubber is actually pretty neat. It just pokes out by a millimeter by the looks of it from the other external piece. So it is actually holding it off the acrylic itself. So it's, <laughs> it's so different to, I guess, what I normally would see and it's a really nice display thing definitely and I can appreciate 
uh, I did effort to going to this because now if I'm reviewing a board and I want to take some glamour shots, I want to take some glamour photos of it, I can actually set it up on this and it has, you know, the name there as part of the photo instead of, you know, having to Photoshop a watermark or something else on top. I think it's cool. I really appreciate the effort to go to customizing it and you know what, if you like this kind of thing, if you like the look of it and the build complexity is not really that hard, it's just time consuming if you have a really ratty set of wrenches, whereas if you had dedicated keys it'd be a lot faster. Or even if you had electric screwdrivers with the right hex bits on it, you could just bang and in it goes. What I would like to see is those nylon nuts going to metal and also providing just some matching black nuts or whatever the color is going to be for the actual stand and then having the option as well of having the same color matching on the front plate. Other than that I think it ticks the brief. It's definitely something that an enthusiast would appreciate more than something very basic and simple and for all those content creators out there who are reviewing boards and designing and creating and stuff like that I think this adds that extra touch of you know, wow factor to it that will really bring a picture together. So, you know, if I if I snap that now and I put that on Instagram, um, there's no doubt about of where that picture has come from and who has actually taken it. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Now, I technically do have some extra webcam somewhere, but the problem that I've had recently is whenever I try and start up um, an actual webcam while I'm recording in OBS Studio, which is what I'm using, it actually crashes, which is why I'm hesitant to actually try and plug one in to give you that front shot. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my phone to maybe give you that uh, instead. So just get into my camera. So, I'm just going to have that angle. Okay, so now we're going to use the wonders of technology of looking at a picture of a picture. So, there you go. That's what it looks like front on with my, with my ratty phone. Okay, cool bananas. Well, thank you. Adelic for for putting the time and effort into actually designing this, making this, customizing this and sending it to me. I actually certainly appreciate it and I hope that this will turn up on the treehouse whenever it is available um, and of course you know feel free to completely reject all of my feedback on this uh, whenever it is that you feel like it. So thank you for checking out this video. If you like this kind of stuff you want to see more, hit that like button below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And of course, the bell notification button as well if you want to get notified by YouTube whenever a new video comes out. Well, that's it. Time for a wrap. So, as of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.